Our last stop for today brings us over to Corsair. As you can see, behind of me we have the Hydro X series. As you've probably seen already on the web, Corsair introduced their new water cooling lineup. And they not just introduced a small fitting the way I did it, no, they just showed a whole lineup. Basically, I think they told me 64 parts. That's actually quite a lot. But you can already imagine if you're just counting all the fittings and all that, that's a lot. So we can just start with the fittings and also with the radiators. And what I really like about this is that Corsair is openly communicating that they're not manufacturing all of the water cooling components themselves. They teamed up, for example, with Mayhems for the fluids and with Hardware Labs for the radiators and also with Bits Power for the fittings. And that's, I think, a very good approach because Corsair knows that for certain parts like Bits Power fittings, they know that Bits Power have a lot of experience when it comes to manufacturing of fittings. When it, they know what it is about for quality when it comes to rotary fittings. It's a little bit more complex and I think putting some trust in already established brands is a very good choice and also openly communicating that they're doing that. I think that deserves some trust and I really like that they're really open about this and not being like, oh no, we're not doing that and everybody knows they would do it. So that's a very good thing. Just looking at the lineup, we have the typical 120, 140, uh, 120, uh, 240, 360 radiators, then 140, 280, 420 radiators in different sizes, different thicknesses. We have all the water cooling fittings. They are available in silver, gold, black and white. So all of them, they have the angle connectors, the hard tubing uh, lineup, they have a soft tubing lineup. So basically everything you need is covered. Going over to the blocks, we have CPU blocks, GPU blocks. We will talk about the CPU blocks a little bit more detailed in a bit. When it comes to the CPU blocks, uh, to the GPU blocks, I like that they made a design um, where you uh, have the thermal paste and the thermal pads already applied to the block so there's no like hassle of peeling off all this foil from the thermal pads and all of that. Everything is already pre-applied. Basically you, you remove your stock cooler, you apply the mono block or the full cover block from Corsair, attach the back plate to it to give it a nicer look from the back and that's it. There's no complex mounting mechanism. Also all screws are accessible from the back for the back plate, which also makes it a little bit easier. If we're looking at this water block, this full cover block for a GPU, you can also see there's a flow indicator right in here, which is also really cool. And um, this is a pump reservoir combination. What is kind of special about this is that most reservoirs, most pumps we see out there are CNC manufactured, or at least the additional parts for it, so the PMMA parts or the POM parts and all of that are typically CNC milled. Those parts are injection molded, which gives additional um, stability for the material because all the fibers of the plastic are aligned in the same direction. We don't have micro cuts, what you typically get from cutting with CNC. So we don't have that on here, which is a positive thing for sure. So that's a D5 combination with the reservoir on top. But let's get a little bit more deep to the cooler. So thanks, coolers suddenly appeared. We have the XC7 and the XC9. XC7 is the one in black and this is the XC9 uh, which is the one in silver. When I looked at them the first time I thought it's exactly the same one and just with a different cover, but they're not. If you're taking a look inside you can see that the XC7 has a rougher structure, so it has less fins, less surface area, which means that it's capable of less cooling. This one, the bigger or more high-end block, contains more fins, has higher surface area, so it's capable of more cooling. What I found really interesting is if we take a look at how this thing is mounted, if we just remove this plastic piece quickly, you can see this is kind of familiar. It really reminds me of an Acetec AIO. And you know that uh, Corsair is also having a lot of AIOs. Pretty sure you know about that. And this is exactly the same mounting. This is exactly the same mounting as you have it on an AIO, which I think is a very smart way of especially cutting down costs and keeping it simple. And as, especially if they already have those parts, it makes absolute sense to go for this step. What I really also like is the Corsair cooling configurator. So we just move over with the camera and take a look at that. Next to me, we have the true Corsair RGB system. It's not only RGB when it comes to LEDs, but also the cooling fluids. So we have a triple loop water cooling in here and you can see it's red, green and blue. What I also really like about this is that blue is powering the CPU, 
green is powering NVIDIA GPUs and for red we just have to use our imagination and pretend that we have some AMD Ryzen 3000 underneath which is not released yet so it's actually Intel but we'll just pretend it's like that. So very very nice system it just shows what the Corsair water cooling fittings or water cooling components are capable of. So we have the nice chrome fittings, we have the uh, D5 pump combinations, we have a ton of radiators in here which shows what you can build with the whole Corsair lineup. Obviously combining it with other Corsair components such as the Corsair Dominator RGB memory and also Corsair fans. We will now move over to the cooling configurator which is something I have to show you because it's just a really really neat feature basically what you can do is you can input all your hardware you can input CPU mainboard GPU and once you did all that you define your case then Corsair can tell you what kind of cooling solution you need, what kind of, what, what amount of radiator, what surface area. For example, in this step, it asks you to define if you're overclocking your CPU or, uh, or not. So you can select no or yes, and depending what kind of selection you take, it will show you a different selection for cooling performance for the radiators. So we have stage one, two, three in here. And for example, for stage two, it would recommend a thicker 360 radiator in front and a slimmer 360 radiator on top. And this really depends on your selection. So you can, for example, enter if you're overclocking your CPU, overclocking your GPU or not. Definitely check this out if you're planning to use the Corsair water cooling fittings. This can be really helpful to know what kind of components you should choose. That's it from Corsair booth from Computex 2019. I hope you enjoyed the water cooling components. Let me know what you think about the Corsair water cooling components. If you would like for, uh, to see, for example, a build lock, I could perform with the Corsair water cooling components. I'll just take a sip of the new XL5 Red. That's it. That's the end of this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon.